Now I rewrite the code using an augmented assignment. You implement Dunder IAD. The object was changed in place. Look at this code. It performs a binary operation. The word binary here means that two elements are used. These elements are called operands. The plus symbol is the operator. This operator adds the operands. The result is assigned to i. I can also do this. I assign value 4 to i and then increment i by 7. This too is a binary operation because it uses two operands. The old value of i and integer 7. The result is assigned back to i. Let me repeat the steps. Evaluate old i Add 7 and assign the result back to i. Now I rewrite the code using an augmented assignment. This time the operation and assignment are combined in a single statement. You can read this yourself in the documentation and I'll put a link to it in the description. The document describes that operations can be performed in place. And indeed when you take a look at PEP203, the rationale seemed to be simplicity of expression and support for in-place operations. I'll tell you in a minute why in-place operations make sense to me. But first I'll give my opinion about augmented assignments simplifying syntax. Look at this code. This works in pretty much all languages and it requires no thinking. But now look at this code. I know this syntax from other languages and assume it will add 1 to i, but I had to think about it for a moment. It raised question marks. One of the goals of any designer is to eliminate such question marks. This is described very well in the book Don't Make Me Think, which is actually in my top 5 books for software engineers I recommend reading. So perhaps simplified syntax is not the best argument to use augmented assignment and we should look at the function of augmented assignments. For this I'm going to set i to 0 again and inspect the id of the object. Then I increment i with 1 and print the object id again. And here is the result. Notice the ids are different. Is this because i was reassigned? I add the augmented assignment. You already learned this should increment the integer in place, which means changing the existing integer object instead of creating a new object. So you might expect the id stays the same when I execute the code. Look at this. The id changed again. Why did that happen? It happened because integers are immutable in Python. To increment it, a new object has to be created. And if you want to learn more about that process, I recommend watching my video on variables in Python. For now, let's get back to the original question. What does this code do? To answer the question, I use a mutable object type. I create a list, print it, and print its ID. Here is the result. Lists in Python support the add operator too and I add a second list to the first list. Look at the output. The list has changed. But so did the object ID. Variable L points to a new object. Now I use augmented assignment to add yet another list. The list has been changed, but look at the IDs. This time the existing list object was changed in place. So augmented assignments try to change the object in place. For this the object must be mutable. So can mutable objects always be changed in place? Well there is one requirement. The object must implement Dunder IAT. Let me show you what that means. I create class Vector2. It takes and stores an x and y value. I create vector1 and increment it by a second vector object. I execute the code. 
And this code cannot work because the vector class does not implement the add method. I implement dunder add. Notice it returns a new vector2 object. I execute the code. No more errors. I print the ID before and after the change. Look at the IDs. They are different. In this custom class, you can actually see why that is. It is because Dunder add created a new object. This is the expected behavior of Dunder add. Now, what happens when I use an augmented assignment here? Notice two things. The code still worked and the IDs are still different. When an object does not support augmented assignments, Python calls Dunder add. But how do you support augmented assignments in your objects? You implement Dunder i add. Notice how x and y of self are changed. And self is returned instead of a new object. I execute the code and look at the IDs. No new object was created. Instead, the object was changed in place. So as a general rule, you can assume that mutable objects can be changed in place. But you have to check if they implement Dunder i add. Yep, working with objects in Python might surprise you sometimes. And if you want to learn more about the role of variables and objects in Python, I recommend you to also watch this video. There you learn what an assignment actually does in Python.